Good morning and welcome to the garden. Um, this week's garden tour, it might be a quicker one because it is like 8.20 a.m. and it is already like 80 some degrees and it's like a sauna out here. So it might be a little quicker than normal, but um, I do need to walk around out here and see what's going on because um, I haven't done that in a couple days. Um, I did quickly come out and harvest a couple things yesterday. Um, a couple pickling cucumbers and a couple tomatoes, one lemon boy and a San Marzano. So uh, yeah, let's take a look around and see what we have out here. So as you can see, the herb area is much cleaner. I came out and weeded uh, everything and it looks much better out here now. Uh, this basil is getting like, like here's my hand. <laughs> but this is actually three plants. So I wanted to make sure I had tons of basil um, and I definitely do. Um, I may make some pesto today. We'll see how the day goes. Uh, my dill is starting to sprout a little bit, which is fine. Um, it's very big and bushy. And then the other one is starting to get pretty tall is exciting and this lime basil is um, doing really well I need to come out and cut the rest of these flowers off and just kind of give it a haircut because see down here it's looking nice and lush and it has more leaves so I just need to do that to that I think um, the green onions I think have pretty much stopped producing um, there's a couple like shoots but I think it's just too hot for them um, the bulb onions, as you can see, I've pulled a bunch up and I actually have them hanging over on the, one of the trellises to dry. Um, and they look, it looks terrible over here, but I, at this point I'm just leaving them and waiting for them to kind of dry. Like this one's probably almost ready to pull up. Um, but I've actually had to kind of dig them up because they are like stuck in there. So I'll leave those for now. Um, the strawberries are starting to send out a lot of runners. I need to come out and trim those because you don't really want to let them do that the first year. Now, if these plants in the middle do it, that's fine because those are like two years old at this point. I've been out here for like uh, four minutes and I'm already sweaty. Um, tomorrow it's only supposed to be like 78 degrees for the high so I think tomorrow night I'm gonna do some work out here uh, get some tomatoes tied up get some more weeds pulled probably get the strawberry runners cut off like that kind of thing um, because today it is just like hot and humid so anyway so down to the peppers my peppers that are just plants I'm just growing these plants just for fun um, this plant is like, it's so tall, but it has no peppers on it. It has no flowers on it. The Serrano has a couple flowers on it, but no peppers. Um, the only pepper that I have, oh, okay, cool. Um, I was going to say the only pepper I have is on this plant, but as you can see, um, it's on the ground. So that's fun. Actually, I lied because there's a jalapeno right there. Right here. Here he is. One jalapeno. That's all I have is one. Oh, two jalapenos. There's one right here. See, peppers like the heat. And so, yeah, see, look. Here's, the, here's that pepper. It was on the plant. It's on the ground now. What the heck? I don't understand. It doesn't even look normal. Uh, I don't know. I'll just leave it. Whatever. Let a bird have it. So I, I just don't understand. I just don't understand what's going on. I mean, if I get two jalapenos this year, I guess that'll be good enough. I don't know. <sighs> Dang it. <laughs> this is so disheartening. I have never had a problem with peppers. I have always, always had so many peppers. I wonder if it's because they're too close together. Like. Maybe I'll pull one up and see 
if that helps. I have no idea. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Cause it's like the end of July. I should have peppers. I should be inundated with peppers right now. And I have had zero. The only peppers I've gotten are from my grandpa, who, who, by the way, is harvesting peppers that are like this big. And I'm like, I'm jealous. <laughs> so anyway, uh, back here in the good news area, this is the determinate tomato area, Romas and Viva Italias. Um, these are my soft tomatoes. And as you can see, this plant right here is loaded with tomatoes. And some of them have like little, like bug spots, but I'm not super concerned about that. Um, yeah, and I don't know what this is. This looks like something's poop. Um, it may be a hornworm, which is concerning to me. I have never had to deal with a hornworm. I don't see any hornworm damage. Like this plant is really loaded with fruit. I mean, it is just like packed. Like look at all those down there. Um, so tomato hornworms, basically what they do is they, they literally can eat a whole tomato plant by themselves. Um, but they'll come in and they'll just eat all these leaves and you'll just be left with a stick. So I have heard that they, it's ridiculous over here. I've heard that they uh, poop and they leave like little pellets like that. So now I'm like concerned about having a hornworm on here, but I don't see any any evidence of there being a hornworm on this plant anywhere. I don't see any stems with no leaves. I don't see a hornworm itself. And they're green, so they blend in with the plant but I don't see one. But to be completely honest, if a hornworm wanted to eat this plant, it would survive. Actually, look. Uh, no, I think that's a rabbit's because it was sticking out the side of the fence. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on this plant. Cause yeah, see like there's more down there, like something that may have pooped on it. But I just, I don't see anything that indicates hornworm damage on this plant at all. Um, the one way you can find them easily is with a black light. Like come out here at night and they glow. So maybe I need to think about doing that. But yeah, I don't see any signs of damage at all. So that's interesting. Uh, this is the plant that I thought had blight. And actually, if you look down here, it does have some more yellow leaves. So, oh, but look, it has a red tomato on it. Um, okay, I'm just gonna pull that off. Yeah, see, some of the branches don't look as healthy, but it's still producing fruit. So I'm not really sure. Um, and actually, it's starting to blush already which is interesting um because none of the rest of these have blushed yet which is actually a fine thing because yeah see yeah. i need to come out here and spray with some peroxide and see if that helps um but basically determinate tomatoes pretty much all ripen in like a two or three week period so once they start ripening they ripen pretty much all together. And you will have, like all these tomatoes out here will harvest or will ripen in like a month's time. Yeah, see, look at this. This needs to be tied up, like in a bad way. Uh, this is why I have a fence, people. <laughs> and like this is laying around. Uh, yeah, and like this is also, yeah, I need to come out here and tie some stuff up. These are the Viva Italias, and they look different. Um, they have like darker green tops and lighter bottoms, which is interesting. Everything is producing out here. I mean, not the peppers, but like, oh, look at this one. That's weird. It's like it had something stuck around it as it was growing. How weird. That's really weird. So, yeah, everything out here is doing really well. So, um, the beans, well, I say that, but then look at these, like these are straight up dying. I, 
I don't know. They have a ton of flowers on them though, so I don't really know what's going on. And this plant just looks pitiful. I pulled out its friend and now it's, it's going. Oh, this sunflower opened. So I'll come out here and probably cut this off later because it's just kind of in the way. <laughs> and like, it just has, it has all these friends now that are just gonna be constantly in my way, I think. So I need to come out here and trim. Look at this little guy. He's almost all the way open. That's so cute. Uh, this Cherokee purple plant just has the one tomato on it so far, but it's pretty big. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, I don't know. Some of these flowers may have been pollinated, but there have not been a lot of flowers lately because it's been so hot. Um, the flowers open up and they fall off. Like here's some right here, but this one has four on it right now. And these long keepers, some of them have started blushing and I actually had to pull one off yesterday because it had blossom and draught still, but that's okay. Um, I probably should spray with Tums again just to be safe, but yeah, so these aren't like huge. These are more of like a saladette size. They're like a smaller variety, I guess. So I'm interested to see how these taste. Um, these are the, this is the San Marzano plant and it's getting really tall actually. Um, it has a lot of fruit on it and there's some down here, like here's a whole cluster that are ripening. This one's looking pretty ripe on one side but not on the other. But I may go ahead and pick that one. See like this one's the same, it's starting to ripen on one side but it's still pretty green up at the top. Um, this one I'm concerned about because it's pretty soft, so I think I'm going to go ahead and pick this one. Yeah, because it's pretty soft down here in the corner. I don't want it to overripe it on the vine. Uh, the purple Russian plant is all the way up there. I could barely even reach it. Ugh. There it is. It's all the way at the top. It's actually over the top of the trellis now. It's crazy. And it's producing fruit all the way up here. I mean, this is like eye level with me right now. And there's flowers up here. So I literally could have hanging tomatoes. There's a tomato up here too. Um, yeah, look at all these. Um, this one down here is finally starting to blush. It has a split in it, but it's not real bad. So I'm gonna leave it what happens because this is the biggest one on this plant um, the Chianti Rose look at that that's beautiful and it it's split in the top a little bit but again I'm not real concerned um, I am gonna wait for this to get a little more red and then I'll pick it um, because it's still really hard. It's getting soft here, but it's not too soft. I'm not sure why it's blushing in this weird way, but it is. Um, this one is not blushed at all yet. So, and then there's a couple more on this plant. Like there's two right here, there's one up here. And that's it. This plant doesn't have a ton of fruit on it. Um, Lemon Boys. See, like, it is still producing tomatoes, because here's some more. Uh, the lemon boys are starting to ripen. This one down here is a little bit blushed. Just a tiny bit. I picked one from, like, right here yesterday. And this one, which is the plant that the first one came off of. That one's starting to ripen a little bit. So, oh. Oh yeah, you can see how sweaty I am. Uh, things are happening in tomato land, which makes me happy. Um, there's pollination happening behind me. I need to come out tomorrow when it's not so hot and tie some things up. Um, and I, I need to trim the sunflowers because they're like, like how big they are, they're massive. But anyway, um, over here in cucumber land, I just had to put him back up. He's 
this is the pickle plant. It's getting pretty tall. Um, I picked three pickles yesterday off of here. Here's one that's kind of weirdly shaped. I think I'm just going to leave him on there for another day and just see what happens. And he has like a little conjoined twin. Um, actually, here's one right here that needs picked. So this is the size I like to pick these. Just kind of like hand full size because I don't want them to get too big. Um, because then they get really seedy and they're just not as good. There's also one way down here. That's picked, so. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that guy also. Like this one is on the bigger side. So here's the two that I just picked. And as you can see, this one's a tiny bit smaller than this one, but these are both like a good size. So I'm just gonna leave my little tomato here with those. We'll come back and get those. Um, the burpless cucumber has lots of cucumbers on it, as you can see, but none of them are like ready to pick. Literally, there's seven cucumbers on this plant right now. I think they're probably all gonna be ready at the same time, which is great. Um, this one is growing upside down which is interesting oh, there we go we'll let him hang a little bit um, my beans over here um, there's a couple beans on each plant I think but my beans just aren't doing well this year like look at this like it's starting to lose its leaves there's some beans on it though down here but there's no beans up here, which is interesting. I'm not sure why exactly, but there's not. Um, the beans over here, this plant has some on it. See, there's a few. This plant has some on it. I'm just not getting very many beans this year, and this is the one I just planted. Hopefully it goes up. If it doesn't, I'll be so mad. <laughs> Uh, my watermelon is trying to grab onto my bean trellis. Um, speaking of watermelon, here he is. It's like softball size now. Um, I need to get some pantyhose and hammock this guy up. So he doesn't fall when he's done. Uh, this one is doing pretty well. I say that and he's like taking over the onions back here, but that's okay. Just wrap him around like this and he should stay up. There we go. Yeah, so he's kind of okay. Um, as you can see, he's much smaller than that plant, but that's all right. Um, this one is going over like this. So I'm just gonna undo him. Oh, he's attached in two places. These I can just kind of rip off. So I'm just gonna put him up like this because I don't really want him going over onto the other. I don't want him going this way, I want him going up. That's the goal. Um, I still have this bean plant here. And it's growing beans, like this has grown. So I'm gonna leave it here and just see what happens, I guess, I don't know. Uh, this can't, look at these, I need to cut these. This cantaloupe plant's doing really well despite being inundated with marigolds, it's doing really well. Um, it even has its first little tendril. So that's exciting. Hopefully I'll get some more cantaloupes out of that. But in the meantime, let's take a look around this plant because I feel like, like I feel like this might be pollinated, but maybe not, I don't know. It hasn't gotten any bigger, but also I'm not 100% sure exactly how on it how cantaloupes grow because I know how like cucumbers grow but I'm not sure how cantaloupes grow and then here's our big one right here he's getting pretty big also he's like palm size so it's exciting and I just saw another bee over here so hopefully that means we'll get some more cantaloupes out of the deal um, there are some female flowers, like here's one. Um, there's also male flowers. So, 
that is a very good sign. That's a sign of a nice healthy plant, I guess. I don't, I don't really know, but yeah. And then right here, these are the onions I grabbed out of the ground last week. And I tried to braid them, but I came out this morning and the braid had fallen apart. Um, so I basically just took what fell and I just stuck it up here. So you just leave them out here until these top parts are dry and they have like that papery skin, kind of like that, um, like they would at the grocery store. And then you just keep them somewhere dark and cool. So I'm gonna grab my little harvest here, my one tomato and my two cucumbers. Maybe, I'm gonna try. Here we go. Grab my stuff, I'm gonna go inside. Um, Look at this sunflower up here. He's a weird looking one, but I like him. There are so many heads on these sunflowers right now. I'm so excited about that. Uh, I'm gonna go inside in the air conditioning, drink my coffee, and yeah, try and stay cool today. So I hope everybody has a great day and I will see you in the next one.